Can you smell that? What's that smell? Oh, sorry, that's me. The smell of my filthiness, the smell of my unwantedness, wrapped in the cacophony of my pricking conscience, the stench of death. On a daily, the other rant, making me an illegal occupant, a bastard to my father, or rather, a sinner. And according to the Constitution of Ezekiel Act 18, subsection 20, an act of the heavenly parliament, it states, and I quote, the soul that sinned shall die. So this is my fate. But from the exodus of Genesis, it wasn't so. Man, the container, God, the content, both interwoven components of each other. But there was a change of ownership due to disobedience. The era and dynasty of sin began. On a daily, man was a prey to her seduction. The law was introduced to curb sin's prowess over man, but the law was tantamount to sin. So we went on from priests to judges to kings to prophets. We kept going back and forth, hopelessly dwelling and regurgitating sin. Hope was a faded word in man's dictionary. Condemnation became the colossal of man's thoughts, and sin became man's essence. But wait. I can, I can hear a sound. Can, can you hear that? I can, yes, I can hear a sound. I, yes, I can hear a sound. A sound of a footstep that quakes the earth. A sound similar to that in the Garden of Eden. Yes, I can hear the sound. A sound like the pride of lions. I know who is coming. It's my father and king. Yes, it's my father and king. But wait, what's happening? I'm confused. It doesn't look like him. Why is the almighty disguised as a weakling? Why is the mighty king dressed as a servant? Why is the lion displayed as a lamb? As a lamb? Sin and death almost choked on their laughter when they saw him. They were like, so this is man's supposed escape route. So sin and death went back to their drawing board and decided to deliver a final blow to damn man's hope forever. And they thought that the best way they could do this was to make man's hope die like a criminal. And guess what? They succeeded. So from nakedness to strokes to lashes to wearing a ton of crown to carrying the cross to being nailed to drinking vinegar until the turning point when he said it is finished. Now when he said it is finished and gave up the ghost, sin and death laughed because they thought he had succumbed to their antics and other prey of their vile seduction of their vile acts and seduction. But little did they know that embedded in those three simple words, it is finished, where landmines planted right under their feet, waiting for the right time to go Hiroshima on them. Those three words, it is finished, was the finality of sin and death, bringing man back to totality, I mean back to when divinity and humanity could relate like husband and wife. When he said it is finished, he took his time in the grave, sorting out for the best of clothes because he knew a new look was needed for a new life. When he said it is finished, at one slingshot, he got both sin and death. Now you can perfectly relate when I tell you killing two birds with one stone. A brutal uppercut that killed them into a journey of no return. And at one, two, three counts down, we had a new champion. It was the bloody coup d'etat. Christ's death caused a paradigm shift, exchanging man's sin for his righteousness. Now you can relate when I tell you that this me who you see standing before you is one that has been forgiven. I've been given a makeup, so I no longer have to drink from sin's cup. Oh, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by the angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in this world, and received in glory. Alas, I'm a free man that has been formed and fashioned in Christ. Freedom is now a trait I carry. Christ is the turning point. But that is not the end of this story. Because the beautiful thing about this point, turning point is that the master's hand is still wide open, patiently waiting for you to accept him. So I would like you to shout out the noise because one thing you do not understand is God is not planning to love you. He already loves you. No, you didn't get me. I said the master's hand are still wide open, patiently waiting for you to come. So shout out the noise. Do away with the guilt and the shame because God is not planning to love you. He already loves you. For his hell experience on the cross already guarantees you a place in heaven. Wait. Can you smell that? Oh, that is me. I'm now Jesus perfume, so feel free to call me God sent. <laughs>